All right, we are back. It's Friday. College football is back. The SoBet Scoop, for once, we're on time, right at 11.30. Um, probably because my parlay cash last week, and we got to kick Gutsy off the show, so we're done waking him up at 11.32 to hop on. But uh, today we got Ethan, also known as both basketballs, big TikTok guy, big basketball influencer. First time on the show, kind of. Last time connection really hampered him. <clears throat> Excuse me. Bottom left, we got Joe Madden, of course, out of Canada, the Great White North. Everybody knows Joe. And today, first timer on the show, it's Wes Huber, our head of growth, a man in a former life known as Dr. Locks. Um, but let's get this thing started. Just to recap last week, um, I won out of the five people that were on the show. I hit a plus 857 parlay with the Aaron Judge home run. Um, so we'll, we'll just briefly mention that. Uh, but college football is back, so that's what the show is going to be about today. Enough uh, talking about the MLB. I was getting pretty sick of the MLB all summer. Um, but to start out, let's talk about the games last night. I know I had Penn State money line. That was an incredible game to start out the season. Um, Ethan, we were just talking about that before the show. Did you have any bets on that game? Give it, give us a little recap on 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 last night. Yeah, I was big on Purdue money line. I was so hyped for it. Started college football season. I was so ready. I was so hyped. I thought we had it in the fourth quarter. They were up. They had an entire momentum, especially at home. It sucked, though. That, that 70 yard touchdown I loved. And then I knew Penn State on that drive. I said, that offense is clicking. Purdue can't stop them. They seriously, Purdue's offense, Purdue's defense on that last drive looked pathetic. And especially the entire game, they were poor tackling um, on the defensive side of the ball. So, yeah, it was terrible. Wes, yeah, what you got? Game. Sorry, I was muted for yeah. a second. For sure. Um, I had Purdue plus three and a half. It looked good, Tough. especially with that interception pick six. And then it was just poor play management down the stretch on Purdue's part. And I don't know why they got away from the running game. That was kind of clicking for them. And, yeah, I mean, it was just very, very poor play management down the stretch so that was just a heartbreaker to start off the season for sure joe i know you had penn state right no i was riding the over in this one so oh. 52 and a half just looked way too late in this game i was leaning on penn state easy money yeah easy money on that over i was i wasn't shocked by what we saw out of the defenses i think a lot of people forget that the nerves of those defenses definitely harder to make that tackle than make that run yeah, I mean, great start to the season, though, especially with the Pitt West Virginia finish, too. Two just incredible games. Um, didn't come out on the right side of that game, but, you know, I was just there to be a fan at the end of the day. Betting doesn't really matter, right? Um, but we're going to get into this weekend. We got three massive games to start the season. Starting out, Oregon, Georgia. Massive game for the Bulldogs coming off the national championship. It seems like Oregon always loses these early, these early season games. Ethan, we'll start there. Betting preview there. I think the line right now is at 17 and a half. Or is that the Notre Dame game? I think they're both the same. I think both those yeah. games are on minus 17. Yep, 17 and a half. Yeah, what? no, this is, a, this is a play for me, for sure. I, I'm, I'm betting on that minus 17 and a half Georgia, 100%. Um, we saw Oregon come in last year and beat Ohio State team in the shoe, which was a crazy game. But I think this year, it's just two different teams right here. And I see that last year with Big Ten going in into Michigan, being in the playoff, them getting killed by Georgia, seriously killed. They were down 31-0 at some point in that game. I think we're getting to the point where the SEC separation is getting higher and higher, and you're going to see that gap grow quicker and quicker. I don't think this game's going to be close. I think Georgia's going to come in hot, and I, I like the minus 17 and a half. Bold move, laying the points. Wes? Yeah, I kind of have to agree with Ethan. I think Georgia comes in and steamrolls Oregon. The Pac-12 just historically can't compete with the SEC. Also, the Big Ten just can't compete with the SEC. And with Georgia coming off the high of the national championship, had a good recruiting year, Kirby Smart still leading the way, I think Georgia's going to come in and at least win by 21. Um, so that's kind of like where my stance is. I just don't think the caliber of the recruits Oregon has and the depth of Oregon 
is going to be able to compete with Georgia. Georgia is just a well-oiled machine at this point. Um, so even their backups, they could throw their JV team in there and beat Oregon by at least two touchdowns. Their JV team? Wow. No yeah. way. No way. Wow. A- any Oregon players listen to this? There's some motivation. <laughs> Joe, who you got in that game? I'm going against you guys. I'm taking Oregon plus the points. I think this is way too many points here. I know Georgia is deep. They lost 15 players to the NFL every year. This team or all teams are new teams. I don't care how many players they have coming back. I know how deep this team is, but 17 and a half points. They're at the top of the mountain. It's theirs to lose. And I think this is one of those games where Oregon just keeps it within that number. They're not going to come out and win it. This isn't going to be an upset, but 17 and a half. Got to roll with the Ducks with Bo Nix coming in here from Auburn in their quarterback position. I think it's a great way to take this one. It actually opened at 16 and a half, so Georgia's, Georgia's got the money there. Um, I'm staying away. I, it's a stay away game. I'm on Joe's side if I was going to pick a side. like I don't think these games are too early to predict, especially with both teams being good. Georgia lost a ton of players to the NFL. It's obviously an SEC engine that just reboots every year. But um, historically, they haven't been great in early season games under Kirby Smart, putting up points at least. So I, I'm just going to stay away from this one. Uh, the next one on the slate, though, we got Arkansas, Cincinnati. I know uh, Wes was talking some shit before, before we went live about this. But Ethan, you looking at this game? Are you betting on this one? Yeah, no, this is another one I'm, I'm putting money on for sure. I like Arkansas minus seven as That's well. Um, I think, so with, with Cincinnati, they're only, they're only returning five starters on defense. On that defense that was loaded last year, five starters returning. Um, I think Cincy will be probably top of their conference still. But once again, I think that, I think that SEC gap between Cincinnati's conference, I, I don't, I, I'm taking the minus seven. I think this line could be even bigger. Um, Arkansas is a team that's going to be hungry this year. Um, they're going to be ranked probably in the top 25 the entire year, maybe in the top 15. So, yeah, I'm laying, I'm laying money on Arkansas for sure. Wes, Cincinnati guy down there? Yeah, I'm definitely sprinkling Cincinnati money line for sure. I think since he wins by one. Um, I, I just think everybody's high on SEC team. I don't think Arkansas is great. Um, they're kind of middle of the pack program in the SEC. I think Cincy still has uh, some talent on their roster. Um, so I think they're going to give them a ball game. So I definitely think that they cover. Um, I would even just sprinkle Cincy money line if you're being a little crazy. And Joe? Yeah, this before, is going to be. Before I chime in here? Yeah, it's going to be a completely interesting one because we know Arkansas is going to really work that passing game, get that ball moving. But we're going to see Cincy play a run game. I think it all comes down to Cincy's defense on this total. If Cincy's defense can slow down Arkansas, make them play more of a run game as well, I think the under 53 is where we're going to be at. Um, I think it's going to get up in that first half, though. I think we'll see adjustments in the second because I think Cincy will get some points on the board and Arkansas will play it safer. So give me the under 53, a lean on Arkansas if I had to take a side. Yeah, I was actually looking at the under two. Um, I'm all over Arkansas, though. All over Arkansas. Cincinnati lost four safeties and corners in the top four in the top four rounds of the draft. Ken, Kendall Bryles, KJ Jefferson, connection was electric last year. They have another season under the like. They're gonna. Just, I think they're gonna blow them out, honestly. And Arkansas didn't lose a lot on the defensive side of the ball either. I think. I think it's gonna be a blowout, huge mismatch. Cincinnati's just bound to regress too after two like pretty good years back to back and losing a ton of starters. Um, I think this should be closer to like 10 points, honestly. I think it's going to be a blowout. Um, and I'm pretty confident actually in that. That's, it was actually going to be one of my three picks at the end. Um, so there you go. I'll spoil that for you guys. Uh, let's move on though to the one that everybody's looking at Notre Dame, Ohio State. 17 and a half. Marcus Freeman, not too happy about that line. Wrote it down, told the locker room. A uh, little motivation for the Irish there. But, uh, Ethan. We'll start with you. What you got on this game? Yeah, look, um, I, I totally side with Marcus Freeman on this. I think that line is absolutely ridiculous. Now, if we're talking about teams like Georgia and Alabama, it's fair to see those lines. They've seen those lines all last year. Um, but this is a top five matchup. I, I, I think it's criminal 
Um, the only kind of reason, the big reason that this line is so infatuated is Notre, St- Notre Dame's losing like half their wide receiving core, um, which is huge, obviously, going into the horseshoe. They're going to have to be able to pass it. Um, but I- I'm taking the points here. I just think it's a safer bet, honestly. Um, obviously, I think Ohio State's going to win this game, and I- it probably will g- it's going to be a 10-point game probably. But I think that first half is you're going to see a pretty close game. Fair enough. Wes? No, I'm in agreement. I like Notre Dame in this. I just think 17 and a half is just way too many points. I don't think, I think the quality of team Notre Dame has um, is pretty good. Uh, And there's a lot of motivation with new head coach Freeman there. Um, So I think he's going to have the fighting Irish ready um, to play this game, especially with all the just slanter going back and forth all week. Um, I think this is a really disrespectful line. So I think Notre Dame is going to come to play. Um, obviously Ohio state is number two in the country for a reason, but I mean, as Ethan stated, having a top two, top five teams playing at this caliber of a game with a 17 and a half spread seems a little outlandish unless you're, um, either Georgia or Alabama in that game. So I think it's going to be way closer than 17 and a half for sure. Joe, this is an interesting one. I am a major Buckeyes fan. I'm going to tell you guys, I know Buckeyes fans, coaches, unless they come out and win this by 25, they're going to look at it as a loss in this game. Ohio State's going to come out hard, but my question mark is on the defensive side. Now they have improved their defenses with Jim Knowles, their defensive coordinator coming out. I think that's going to give Notre Dame a really hard problem here. And I think they're not going to be able to contain the Ohio State Buckeyes, but like you guys said, 17 and a half is a lot of points. What I'm gonna look at is not a side, I would look at the first half spread at, um, I believe it's 10 for Ohio State. I'm gonna take that. And then I'm gonna look at their team total over 37 and a half. With all the weapons Ohio State has, their quarterback, uh, CJ Stroud, I don't see them not getting into the 40s for their team total here. So taking it those two ways. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of on your side, too. I don't – I mean, they're definitely not going to stop Ohio State. I think Ohio State easily wins this game. Whether they cover the spread is why we make lines. But um, they're not going to be able to stop Ohio State. Ohio State's going to score at will. Um, the question is, like, is Notre Dame going to be able to slow the game down enough and have success running the ball to where Tommy Reese doesn't have to make plays um, and keep it close to a point where they cover 17 and a half? I think it's a toss-up, honestly. Um, I could see Notre, I could see Notre Dame just absolutely flopping in this game. Um, one in seven in the past five years against top ten teams. So I mean, I don't think we're going to see a shocking victory here from Notre Dame, but uh, they could cover the spread. I'm going to stay away from this game just because just because of that unknown factor. But uh, I expect Ohio State just to be all over them. Um, but all right, those are the top three games for the weekend. Um, I'm pumped. Football's back. Summer depression is over. Um, we don't have to bet on the MLB anymore. And uh, let's get into our three picks. Three picks for the weekend. Your locks, your go-tos. Ethan, who you got? Okay, so these are going to be all um, three Saturday night football, Saturday football plays. Uh, I'm, I'm not doing MLB this weekend. I just can't. Um, as, a, as me trying to have fun this weekend watching games. Um, so I'm going to go, my first bet, I'm going to go Michigan minus 31. Um, this is a game Colorado State has been, was atrocious last year. I think Michigan should be ranked in the top six. Their preseason, they're ranked eighth. I think this team is going to be amazing, seriously. And that's not just the bias talking. Um, and then I also like Notre Dame, that plus 17 and a half for sure. Um, and then my last play is San Diego State, minus seven. Um, that's a game where, oh my gosh, I'm favoring San Diego State. They have a brand new stadium. Um, so yeah, I'm going San Diego State, minus seven. Wait, say those one more time. I just missed them. No, for sure. Uh, Michigan minus 31. Yep. Notre Dame plus 17 and a half. And then San Diego State minus seven against Arizona. All right. Wes, Dr. Locks. Yeah. Um, I really like the Gators against Utah. I oh, I already hype- I locked in Utah on Monday. Yeah, I think the hype train behind Utah. They had a great season last year. I just don't think those Utah kids are really, and I know Florida is basically starting from the basement up. They have a new coach coming in from UL Lafayette. He has a winning pedigree at UL. It's a whole different ball game, but the 
caliber of athletes are still better in the SEC. And Utah, coming from across the country, I don't think they're really prepared to play in this heat down in the swamp. Good the, point. The humidity Good point. is a massive factor. It and is. When these kids don't practice in that humidity in Florida, it's going to eat them alive. And it, it, they might get out to hot start the first two quarters, but it's going to break them down leading into the third, fourth quarter. So I like Florida covering this. I could even see Florida winning this game. Wait, hold on. Um, I want to pull up the Utah roster and see Florida. how many players are from Florida in the Southeast. <laughs> um, that's fine. But I still think practicing out in Utah, it, you get acclimated to that weather. So I still think Florida has uh, at least some, I would put some points into consideration just for the humidity and the factor of the heat. Um, I think Florida covers this plus three, especially at home. I think that's disrespectful, especially from Florida standpoint. Um, then I also like Georgia. I think Georgia is just going to roll in this ball game. Um, and then my third pick is I think Cincy kind of covers this game, um, against Arkansas. So those are my three picks, um, going into this weekend at the, uh, that's seven and a half. Or is it um, yes. six and a half? I think it's seven and a half. So I do like Cincy getting seven. Okay, cool. Joe? Well, tonight I am absolutely loving Old Dominion, plus the points with the sprinkle on the money line. I think they are complete barking dog here. Old Dominion, we saw finish off so strong last season, and we've seen them notoriously, like really good against the spread at home. They're going to have a solid game against Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech has um, transferred in Grant Wells. Uh, he's so interception prone. I think uh, Old Dominion will get those picks tonight. So we'll be able to keep this one tight and probably win it. I'm taking the money line bigger than I am taking them plus the points. So, but you guys can sprinkle on the money line if you don't have faith in them. They made me some good money last year. So kind of biased with them. SMU and North Texas. I'm taking this one over the 68 and a half. Um, if you can get SMU's team total, which I cannot get anywhere, no one's letting me bet it. I take that over as wow. well. I can't. I don't know why they're not giving it to me. Like you're ahead of the books, right? But it definitely is going to hit. SMU is just going to run over them today. Um, but we can see North Texas get some points on the board defensive or um, not defensively, offensively, and because SMU defensively has some secondary issues. So I see this one just being not a shootout battle, but just a shootout. SMU is coming in, getting those points. And then Clemson on Monday night over Georgia Tech, they are going to run away with this. Clemson, yes, they went, what, 10-3 and three last season, but still disappointing for Clemson. They need to come out way stronger this year. They are preparing for this game. They know how to beat Georgia Tech. They know how to beat them by a mile. So give me them laying the 23 and a half. Love it. <laughs> um, all right. My three picks, I already said Arkansas, minus seven and a half. Um, <clears throat> this one, I was just way ahead of the books on. So nobody's going to be able to get this. But I got Utah State at plus 38 and a half. The line's now down to 31. Um, so you can see how much that game's been bet. Uh Clearly, everybody's on Utah State. Um, I don't really know much about them. I just know they returned a bunch of players, like pretty much everybody. And there's some dude in Pennsylvania who's put thousands of dollars on them to win the national championship. <laughs> so maybe it's a maybe it's a ploy that the books plotted so everybody would bet on Utah State. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm taking Utah State plus 38 and a half. You can't get that line, so I wouldn't take the plus 31, but. That's that's what I got second, and then Army money line. Everybody thinks Coastal Carolina's you know so good off their hot season last year. Army's a different animal, man. They're gonna run the triple option. They're gonna slow the game down. They're gonna cut block. Coastal Carolina just isn't isn't ready for that. Army's gonna go in there. They're gonna win that game. It's just that they're built different. Jeff Munkin's got a culture in that locker room. They're built different, and Army Army can go in undefeated. Like they have the talent to go undefeated. They play like six FCS schools. It's ridiculous. Um, but yeah, that's what I got. All right. Anybody else got any sleepers? I mean, don't sleep on Florida. I'm telling you. I already bet against Florida, actually. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Unfortunately. I was, uh, I was looking at the, the Vanderbilt game. 
minus 19 at home against Elon. Yeah. I might. Th- I think that's a big sleeper. Like uh, Vanderbilt came out and smashed Hawaii last weekend. Yeah, that is true. But and was now, that how, but, how good they were or how bad Hawaii was? Yeah, well, I think Hawaii is better than Hawaii. Elon. <laughs> Hawaii is better than Elon. I can't understand that, yeah. Elon's a pretty good FCS team, so don't sleep on Elon as well. But, Joe, I love that Old Dominion pick. I love taking the money line for sure. Yeah, absolutely. They're going to have a killer night tonight. ODU is yeah. insanely profitable last year, right? Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, all right. They're a wagon, too. I know Wes isn't on it, but I, I, I love Arkansas minus seven. I mean, that's, that's a bet that I, I do, mean. too. I think they're going to absolutely smash Cincinnati. It's just a perfect spot. Yeah, uh, that minus seven. I think that line, like you said, could be at minus 10. And that would be a little more kind of like, I don't really know what to do. But th- I think minus seven is right where I want it. Dude, it's at home, too. 100,000 Arkansas fans. Just, oh, yeah. They're going to smash it. Um, I can't wait. I'm actually a pseudo Arkansas fan. Just because of KJ Jefferson. <laughs> I love him. Uh, but all right, we'll wrap it up. That's the SoBet scoop. If you haven't already, go sign up for SoBet. Unlimited, premium, exclusive content all football season. From these two two influencers, from me and Wes when we post through the SoBet account, from our other 20 influencers, picks, content, educational videos, everything you need for the season. Get on there. Check it out. Um, but thanks for tuning in. All right. Thanks, guys. Oh, yeah. Later.